Yeah, we um, we're gonna wear pink uniforms. We're gonna wear pink shoes. Um, Coaches versus cancer and the American Cancer Society. They're always asking us to do these things, and this time, um, through the the, the, the uh, basically the generosity of Under Armour providing the uniforms and the shoes, and the timing was right because my mom's going through some breast cancer situation right now. Uh, our vice president of the university and a good friend of mine, Elizabeth King, has, has gone through a similar deal at this about the same time. So. When they ask me, so we need to honor those ladies and, and just bring awareness and try to raise some money. So what we're going to do is wear the uniforms and then auction them off. And uh, I know my wife has already talked about trying to buy Noah Fernandez. She was 11 when she played, and she loves Noah, and he's number 11, so the, the pink jersey. So no one bid on that one. I think Lynn's going to try to buy it. Well, for you personally, I mean, just how to be able to have this type of platform that you can kind of contribute to. Absolutely. Sometimes. Well, I mean, we, we do quite a bit of that with our uh, guest coach program that we have and we've raised a lot of money over the years for the local charities. By doing that, it's been just a win-win. So it's great. Have you seen all, the all team ones yet? I'm sorry? Have you seen the jerseys yet? I have not seen the uniforms. Uh, I have seen good. the shoes. Do they? Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, they're the hot pink. I understand we did a, uh, uh, a, a picture with them the other day. Speaking of the pink, you got the pink tie going. Yeah. Did you get a new couple, suit? Couple of days, yeah, a couple of days early. Good, good. You don't have to wear it for the game. And uh, with these last two games, it looks like you guys are playing faster, pushing the ball more. Uh, you find that's leading to more success, easier looks? Well, you don't want to have to face a set defense every time. You know, when, when you face a set defense with the caliber of athletes and coaches that we have in our league, you're gonna have some grinded out possessions. You're not gonna fool them a lot. So in the end, you just have to go make a shot. And that's a very difficult thing for us to do. So we have to get easy ones. And in order to get easy ones, one of the best ways to do it is allow one shot on the defensive end and rebound the basketball, have three players that can all push the basketball, which we have had recently on the floor at one time, and then space the floor and spray it and have a rim runner and let's see what we can get early in the possession as opposed to at the end. And we've wanted to do that all along, but we're just doing it better now as we continue to emphasize it. And it's tough to get back to a zone in transition, and that's what Tulane likes to do right now because of their depth issues. Tyson, just how good of a three-point shooter is he for a freshman? Um, Very good. Undoubtedly, he's one of the top in the history of the program already. I think he's top five or six. Mike Kennedy spouts off these stats every Monday night at my radio show. So uh, I know that he's, it's going to be hard for him to catch the, the top guys, but Landry, he's got a chance. Is Landry the number one guy as a freshman? So it, it's 50 to 80 something, something like that. So it's not beyond the realm of possibility, depending on how long we play. And you feel like a lot of it, just when you look at the, the offense, it's just, I mean, you guys are, it looked like you guys were getting good shots all along. It's just a case of you now they're, they're, they're making them now. Well, I mean, we, I thought we got great looks in the Tulsa game. And that was the one that got me. I mean, there were times where no one was standing it was kind of like the UCF game at UCF with Eric Stevenson, as open as he was. And we had shots like that, probably five or six shots. And I remember Dexter being one. I remember Tyson Etienne being one. So it's good shooters. It's guys that normally make those shots. But they can't be expected to make every wide open three. I mean, that's just the way it is. And that's why you play the game. Sometimes you, you do and sometimes you don't. That particular night, we didn't. We shot the ball very poorly. but. <clears throat> Uh, and they made play after play to win. So heartbreaker, but did you make one more shot? It didn't have to be that way. You feel like the you know the, the shooting numbers have been pretty low all season, but you feel like with the caliber of shooters, I mean, the potential is still there to, that you guys have shown in these last two games? I, I've thought all along if we played horse, this would be one of our better shooting teams. I mean, I've spent time with these guys in the gym. 
one of the things I'm paid to do is try to observe young men and how they can put the ball in the basket. And just playing horse now, if you line them up one through 13, we would be a very good shooting team relative to my other teams. I'm not talking about nationally. I'm talking about, about with relative to other Wichita State teams. Now, we don't have a Connor Fran camp, who's, who just is the be, probably the best shooter I've ever coached in terms of you just want to play horse with him, you're never, you're never going to win. But these other guys, we've got good shooters all the way down, you know, you name it. Who, who's not a good shooter of our, of our perimeters now? So, um, but the problem is they're, they're freshmen and sophomores, and sometimes they don't know when to shoot. That's the deal. There are times when they're open, and we've talked about this ad nauseum, and they wouldn't shoot. They're not ready to shoot. There's other times when they're not open, but they're ready to shoot. So that's not good. They've got to figure that out, and that's where experience comes in. You can't buy it. You can't. You just have to let it happen. Zach for Dennis, you know, coming off a really big game. Is this kind of where you imagined he would be going into the year? Yeah, he's playing the way we thought he would play, uh, and he's he's got that fervor back. Um, the way he's running the court. I, I read his comment today in the paper after the Tulane game. And it was like, you know, I, I really sprinted this time to, to get a layup. And, and that's how I got the dunk instead of running to the three-point line. That's what, you know, the coaches are always telling me I should probably do more. And, and maybe I need to do that more. Like, really? Yeah, go get a layup. And, and when they're struggling, that's what we tell them. Go get a layup. Go get an offensive rebound. Go get a, a tip dunk. Um, get, your, get, a, get a wide open look. Stop forcing it to try to make it happen and just get something easy and you'll see the ball, the ball go through the basket and hopefully that will get your confidence going again. So, yeah, he sounds like a coach in his quotes. Does he look like uh, just night and day with his off the dribble and the way he's creating for others now and creating for himself? That was the biggest thing we emphasized in the offseason for him because really last year he was a 3 and D guy. He shoot the three, and he's a great defender. But he didn't have much off the bounce. And at his size, you're going to need to be able to bounce it. You're going to need to be able to attack the rim and get to the free throw line and not score all the time, but create scoring opportunities either for yourself or others. And he has done a great job of, of that since he's been back. Um, um, still in the developmental stage, but way better than last year. And uh, he's start, starting to see some of his hard work pay off. Feels like he's really improved in that area during the season. Um, is, that, is that rare? It feels like normally, you know, guys would come into the season with that kind of that kind of improvement, but it feels like it's happening organically. Well, you can you simulate it in practice all fall. But in, in our practices, he was probably able to do it, but he was hesitant because he's probably going to get fouled. You know, we don't blow whistles a whole lot in practice for fouls. So maybe maybe we should. Maybe there's an example of why we should, because you're going in there and you're just getting your arms taken off. It doesn't encourage you to then go in there again in practice. But uh, in, it, it's pretty physical in games, too. One of my favorite plays uh, in the game Sunday was he, pin it, he got an offensive rebound. He put it on the floor once or twice, went up to score, Two guys jump at him to try to block it, and he just flipped it to Eric around the defender for the, the, the easiest of shots you can imagine. And uh, the other one was when Noah got on the floor twice in one possession, ultimately getting the basketball and stealing it from Tulane and outletting it, I think, to JB maybe, and who made a great pass to Dex for the finish. So, you know, just a, a play angry type of play and, and, a, and a play that Noah has habitually done since he's been here. You know, we've been talking about Noah on and off. Uh, his introduction the other night in the starting lineup seemed to be the loudest. Um, whether that's you know him coming off the bench, being you know kind of the new face on the block, or, or what have you. Um, I guess what do you what do you make of that? Kind of being uh, well, a fan I didn't favorite. Notice that. You, you think that's true? I, I, I thought so. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't I don't know, know what you, what I was you guys about, think. But I wasn't listening to the crowd. I guess. 
Uh, I'm still wondering why these people don't have cell phones. I just don't know what. That's that's the big bug in me. But um, yeah, so the the crowd was loud for him. I felt like. Well, good. I, I guess. Deserves I, that. I guess. Uh, is there anyone that he reminds you of his play uh, from from here? Oh, from here. His stature is more like Matt Breyer. You know, he's a he's a little whippet type of kid. He's not big at all. Um, and I don't think he's as quick as he was when he first got here before the foot injury, but he has a little extra gear that hopefully he will get back. Is, is this thing, you know, every day, every week, he gets removed from the injury because it was a substantial foot injury, a bone bruise somewhere on the, on the bottom of his foot, but uh, it really, really affected him. And it, and it was unfortunate, the timing of it, you know, we're getting ready to play games and he was in the mix and then all of a sudden you're not in the mix and it's he tried to come back and he couldn't come back and it extended all the way to nine weeks without any activity so that's a long time to be out but um, you know he's practiced really well that's what I like and I like his positive attitude I like how he has remained positive you know, I've, I've continued to try to encourage those guys that are down there with him because I think they're all going to be good players but it's hard to play more than five you know, I've tried. I almost did it the other night. We probably would have gotten a technical foul. I didn't get someone subbed out properly, so we had six guys on the on the court briefly, but uh, we didn't. We didn't. They didn't put the ball in play. Thank goodness. I heard you last night talk about the, the kind of that that battle between you know the players realize there's you know there's six games left. We're fighting for NCAA tournament hopes, and then you as a coach. I mean, you want to say that? I mean, there's still time. Let's just focus on on getting better. Uh, Every day in practice, is that kind of a? I think the that's battle? a better way. I think it's just a better way to handle it with these young people. Not, I'm not going to say, hey, you got to win this game, you got to win this game. This is a must-win game. Uh, they're, they're all must-win games, you know. We, if you want to assure that you're in the NCAA tournament, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about that with them anymore. That wasn't. That didn't work so well. We're going to talk about getting better, and we're already better than we were last year. Didn't we win 17 last year going into the? conference tournament yeah. so we're at 19 with six to go so there's been improvement uh, we will continue to work to you know get to 22 23 24 25 wins that'd be great but every game this thus far every game upcoming the rest of the year I don't know who will play in the first round of the conference tournament but more than likely it's going to be a tough game coach last season Towards the end there, you talked a lot about getting Mark back home. Is this kind of the same energy you have with Jaime getting as far as he can possibly go with this team? No, we, we haven't talked about that. I mean, I don't know that there's any tournaments that culminate in Barranquilla, Colombia. <laughs> but if there are, and you know, Darren wants to foot the bill, we'll consider it. Uh, it sounds like a nice place to go. Jamie's told me of a lot of some beaches and whatnot. So I think there's a jungle there as well. Um, so it'd be like Disney World. It'd be like going down to Animal Kingdom or something. We need to, we need to do as well as we can for Jamie because he's he's had a heck of a two-year run here, and he's just a super nice young man. I love coaching him. I wish we had him another year, and that's crazy that he wanted a red shirt going into this year. But we you know, said, well, we want to win some games here, and you're going to help us win a lot of games, and let's do it this year. Let's not. He, he, I guess his thought was next year we have a better chance of being really, really, really good as opposed to this year because of our youth on our roster. But uh, hopefully we can do it for him this year. Have you seen the improvement? Just in this, I mean, obviously he's improved his stamina. He's playing way more now this year. And it just seems like he's, you know, he's become that, that dominant figure for you guys at times. Just in, in a two-year period, I mean, is this pretty, pretty remarkable growth? Yeah, he, he's gotten better, and and generally players get better going into their second year. Junior college players, junior to senior year, just about foolproof. They get much better that second year. Freshmen become better as sophomores. So, you can talk to people as much as you want about how difficult it is to play Division One college basketball at this level, and. Until they experience it, they really don't understand. So after they've experienced it for a year, then they understand. So then their their work ethic that next spring and summer and fall into their second year 
is the impetus for that improvement, in my opinion. Asbjorn is kind of turning on similarly. Who's that? Asbjorn. Asbjorn. Um, has kind of turned it on like in the second half of the season, similar to last year. How important is he down the stretch run? Uh, he had a great play the other night uh, to ignite a fast break. He got over and blocked a shot. Uh, Asbjorn is obviously someone that, you know, depending on the matchups, really gives us the, the, a big body in there. Uh, he's a pretty good rebounder when he tries to use both hands. The biggest thing for him is he likes to play with one hand. He likes to hold the other guy while he's posting and post with one hand. But unfortunately, he can't catch it with one hand. So then he's got to get that other hand up. And I don't know why he doesn't trust his big core, if you will, to post with as opposed to having to hold the guy with his hand. And then he rebounds a lot of times with one hand. So we're trying to get him to do things with two hands. You know, the analogy I used the other day with him was, imagine you're really hungry and you haven't eaten in about three or four days. Would you try to eat with one hand or two? You know, think about it. I bet he'd go with two hands. Excellent. All right, everybody good?